And as you can see, things look a bit of a mess here under this thing. So ran into a few couple issues. Um, first of all, that capacitor divider network I was using did not work for shit. Uh, the values were all over the place when I tried to do the analog read on that. So I ended up having to resort to a simpler two resistor divider there. So I'm using, uh, on this side I'm using a 1K and on this side I'm using a 1.5K. That uh, multiplies the value of the voltage by 0.4. Bob's your, Bob's your aunt, Molly's your uncle. You got what we need for that. I do have it displaying accurately. We are currently at 3.6 volts. I should probably turn that down some. So we've got an accurate voltage display. Let's see if, if I can uh, manage to lift this thing up without crossing any wires. So here's our uh, display we've got going. Now the other problem I'm running into is um, I'm pretty sure it's not 63, 64 degrees down here. So the next thing I'm going to need to do is, I almost say calculate, is to calibrate the temperature value. And the way I'm going to be doing that is with my thermal camera. Let me get this thing rolled up. I am using the Seek thermal camera. Um, I was all set to buy the FLIR camera and it didn't have very great reviews. The app had bad reviews on it. And the version they made that was for USB-C was just uh, terrible by all accounts. I think they've improved it, so no knocks against them, but at the time it did not meet my requirements. And change my mode here. That's the one I want. Well, and now, of course, I can't actually see what I'm looking at. Of course, I turned this thing around so you guys could see it. And now I can't see what the hell I'm doing. According to my thermal camera, that little temperature sensor, which is that thing right about there, I just lost it. What? You know what shows up really bright on the thermal camera? A soldering iron. At least when I have it turned on, it does. A soldering iron. That's better. So, can use this. Yeah, my info is saying it is currently 77 degrees in here. This thing is saying it's roughly 63. So what we want to do is completely change my code for that. I will be, you know what? I can change this quick enough. I'm just gonna hop, skip, and a jump over there. So now, it is no longer giving me voltage. Sorry. It is no longer... Wow, that is all over the place, ain't it? It is no longer giving me an actual temperature. It's giving me the analog value being read by the system. So, right now, it is saying a lot of things. I'd say it's centering around 210. Where'd I put my notebook? Well, that's 75 degrees. All right, now we're gonna put a bit of heat on her. You can see the number on the display there is going up to indicate we're getting warmer. We'll call that uh, 163. Rating 344. Supposedly this is a linear output, so this would be enough data points for me to graph it. But I am going to give myself one more. I don't melt any of the wires in the process. Oh yeah, I see where it is now. 
I'm perfectly centered on, and of course I'm covering the number. Again, this number that you're seeing is not the actual temperature. I'm not quite that stupid. Right about 183. Call that about 400. 183 and 400. I'll be right back after I graph that out and determine the slope. Alright, we're back. Before I continue, I would like to point out that I do in fact own a TI-89 calculator. The link port is busted on it, so I have been using the emulator instead. But I do own the calculator. So if we go into our graph here, if I hit the button right, you can see my three data points and the projected line I have on there. And having put that data in, my display is now calling somewhere in the 80 to 81 degree range right here. Which means if I plug in the old camera, so we pull in the old camera. Here. So yeah, it's calling about 81, 82 degrees. I'll take this out of the way a bit. And that is what my display is also reading, so I think we got her calibrated. Here we go like this. She look in the right spot. So yeah, we have our, uh, we seem to have good calculation now. Let's go ahead and heat up the spot. Alright, so we're still going up a bit. According to my bench, it should be, the air should be about 140. So yeah, it looks like we are at least accurate enough within a few degrees now to call that good. So now the next thing I can do is I can write the code to actually turn on and off the fan. I'm going to use fuzzy logic on this so when it gets to X value it turns off, when it gets below Y value it turns off again. We'll be back in a few. now we're back to it here so one of the things I ought to mention is that in my circuit right now I just have a set delay of 250 milliseconds quarter of a second when I started reading from the analog pin more frequently twice in the same loop the first reading would be about 83 and then the second reading would be like 95 because it didn't actually have enough time to recharge the internal capacitor so I had to modify my code to store it in a variable and just use that throughout the loop uh, what this means, though, is I'm probably only going to want to read this value, you know, once a second, once every quarter second, what have you. But anyway, I do have the code working now. Um, I have fuzzy logic set up, so the fan will turn on when it gets above 90. It'll turn off when it gets below 80. So I'll just use my finger to warm it up here. Uh, so my body temperature should be, uh, you know, 98 point whatever. It's like performance anxiety. This worked fine last time. There we go. Fans on. Now I'll remove the heat source. Me. I'll let the fan cool us back off here. Actually, I'm going to up my voltage. Oh, I don't need to. So now then, the last thing I have to do is... Oh, and clearly the circuitry for turning the fan on and off is working correctly. Before when I plugged this thing in, it jumped up immediately to 6 amps and nothing worked. I couldn't even write to the chip. Turns out, the problem is in this direction here, this guy. Because, look at these two wires down here. The black one goes to positive and the white one goes to ground. And I didn't realize I was an idiot when I soldered this the first time. Of course, the reason I did it like that is because this is a ribbon cable here, and it means all the ribbons go in, and I can use the colors that way. But yeah, it did mean that black was the hot wire and white was neutral, which actually I think is the way they do it in the wall, but whatever. <laughs> we got it figured out. Uh, luckily, I did not damage the backpack or the LCD. Normally, to drive one of these things, you use like eight pins with the backpack. I can do it with one or two. Um, 
SPI and the LED don't play nice together, so I'm doing it with I2C instead, which is the two wires right there. Actually, SPI, if you think about it, you need three because you need your data pin, you need your chip enable, and you need CSN, whatever the heck that is. So now uh, we can go on to the LED code, so I will get that written in, and uh, we will be back momentarily. Alright, we're back with what's probably the final test of today, honestly, because I still gotta edit this video and whatnot. It's getting on towards dinner time. We have everything working, but there is an odd effect that came out of it. Uh, it's going to be a little bit difficult to see because of all the lights, but let me make sure I get this so that the LEDs are all in view. First LED is here. Good, we're in view. Alright, so this is for all the marbles. Now the interesting thing, if you didn't catch that, is that when the NeoPixel strip runs, these LEDs get really dim for some reason. Uh, it's the funny, it's not actually the backlight either. Just as this thing runs and it gets further and further down, this thing just dims out. And LCDs take no power to run, it's like half a volt if that. I have no idea what on earth could possibly be causing that, but in the code I turn on this MOSFET and I immediately send code to display the first LED and then code for the second, the third, and so on and so forth. And I'll need to double check the footage to see for sure, but it sure looks to me like we're getting that first one to display instantly. And uh, this code mimics the full setup as well. It is acting as though there are 4,000 LEDs, so it's sending the update commands for everything. And I'm, I'm tempted to hook more LEDs up to this string, but I didn't have a good way to power them right. I, I could do it, but in any case, I think we've had some successful testing today. So let's just heat this thing up once more just for the hell of it. I used to be really good at heating things up with my... I caught myself. Keep it going, keep it going, keep it going. I really expected this to go faster. There we go! We made it! The fan is on! And it's about to go off already. <laughs> well, we made some, we did a good job today, so we can be happy about that at least. And there it goes, it's off. Yeah, yeah, it's really hard to hold my hand like that. Yeah, we got one more test here, I'm thinking about it because I just did the math on how much power I have to dissipate from that MOSFET, and it looks like I may have done the math incorrectly as opposed to how I did it last time. So, made a little change to the program, and it's now gonna light up 450 LEDs instead of 150. I'm tune my voltage here. And about seven volts out of doer. All right. I <laughs> definitely have to have this ready. Get a climatized to the temperature here. I've realized I made a mistake with my wiring here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. There's a little mistake in the wiring. So I need all the MOSFET to power all three of these doohickeys. So we'll bring you down there. Bring you over here. Bring you over here. And I need another you to bring over there. Whatever color I get, I get. I get yellow. Yeah. 
There we go then. Now the MOSFET is powering all of these. My god, that wire is going to heat up. You know what? Um, I'm going to rejigger this. I gotta, and I know I'm gonna quote myself on this, make sure I got it in the right hole. Yep, there, there she goes. And so there she blows. For science and smoking stuff. You know what? Um, I'm actually gonna record this one with video, so. Start recording. Snap once. Snap again. The video frame rate on this thing is weird, so that's why I do that. There we go. Hmm. Some of she did not like there. Check my code. Well, he definitely powered that strip, so it should have been powering the other two. It would help if I got it in the right hole. Aha! Anyone who can tell how I'm an idiot and give yourselves a cookie, I have these wires backwards. Yay! I'm doing the dangerous thing. I'm using red for negative. So that was just blatantly not working. All right. Now this time we got it all the way home box of cardboard in the way. All right, I'm gonna do this again. We're gonna hit record on this thing. I'm gonna snap once. I'm gonna wait a couple of seconds. Make sure we get the timing right. Snap again. All right. Now she's humming along. Oh, that wire's certainly getting warm. Oh yeah, she's heating up. What did we get there? Hmm. It's warm, but it's not overly warm. I'm more confused as to why we went yellow again. Our supply looks fine. Something was definitely heating up here. I could smell it. Let's run her again. Wires are getting wires are getting kind of mad. As you would expect. Actual die on this thing isn't. Uh, this wire is hitting the hundreds. We know itself is doing fine. Get this thing out of the way. Yeah, this wire here, this one's getting the worst. It's quite pliable. I'm very confused at the fact that we are not all blue, is it? and it's just that one.
What are we looking over here? This wire is quite warm. Ends into the 120s. There's a wire. These wires are doing just fine. DC power supply is putting out three ish amps. I'm not running these at full brightness, by the way. I'm running them a little bit down. This wire is absolutely fine. This must be the other. Woo! Yeah, we found the hot one. Boy, howdy. All right, let's shut down that project. Yeah, we found the hot wire. Up to about 140 at one point there. <laughs> well, I am a little stumped as to why this bugger and its colors all screwed up. I'm going to run that one more time with an exception. I'm going to leave out the second reel and just jump right to the third. When I do that, it works fine. really confused as to what happened there. Try plugging her back in the right way, try and keep these wires a bit free of each other, see what happens. We lit all those up, we lit all those up, and this one goes absolutely nuts. Hey, it ended on the right color that time. I find that very curious and something to be explored another day.